Time now to catch up with the head coach of the Liberty men's and women's outdoor track and field teams, Brant Tolsma, taking a few moments here for us as we get ready for nationals in Eugene, Oregon. And, uh, Coach, we'll start by going back to the East preliminaries at uh, Lexington, Kentucky. A lot of exciting things to take from there. The highlight, certainly as Araya Kerwa going to nationals in the men's 5K. But just your overall thoughts on how things went in Lexington. Well, it depends on my perspective. Overall, I'd have to say it was a pretty disappointing meet because when you look at the results, if I would have seen the results uh, without us in there, I would feel like we had a possibility of getting eight athletes to nationals. Uh, if we could have put together some of our uh, season best or lifetime best performances. Uh, but it's very, uh, to see what we did and to look to the future is, I'm very optimistic about that, knowing that we're returning seven or eight athletes to our team next year who certainly have potential to go to nationals. Uh, a couple of the biggest disappointments, uh, if you look at uh, Carson Waters was probably nine inches over the bar that it took to go to nationals and just brushed it on the backside coming down. Uh, to know that he's not going, even though he jumped that high, is, is kind of disappointing. Uh, certainly in the javelin, we had a chance of getting a couple guys to nationals. And, uh, and then Joe Vane put together a great race, breaking our school record. And the time he ran in the, in the uh, first round, advanced him to the second round. But had he run that in the second, he would have missed nationals by one hundredth of a second. So we have guys that can have an impact at nationals. And that's exciting as I look to the future. But – the fact that we're going out there with just one athlete is a little bit disappointing. You talk about the near misses. You had eight underclassmen in the top 24 for events. Uh, you think you could get a team to nationals as early as next year? Well, that's that's the optim that's the exciting part is that we have underclassmen putting out performances in the top 24. You think another year you graduate out to seniors, you make some progress. For a long time, I've been saying the next thing we need to do in Liberty Track and Field is start going to nationals with seven, nine, 11 athletes like that. The most we've ever gone with is five. And that's where we're, we're aimed to try to progress. And I'm really excited about next year going into it with kids in their heads. They're like, oh, I can go to nationals. Uh, it starts, you know, the first thing you have to do is conceive it. Then you have to believe it. Then you have to achieve it. And it starts with the conception, and we try to conceive it into people's minds, but, but they also need to conceive it. And then they have to get to the point where they believe it. And then, uh, then achieving it, of course, is the ultimate goal. But, uh, but I'm excited about the future. You look at what we have here. Uh, we've been given everything we need, and the opportunity is there. And uh, now we just need to do it, and I believe it's going to happen. No problem for us as coaches to believe it now. And so uh, we're worked on, working hard on trying to achieve it within the next year or two. Azariah Kurwa has achieved it here for this year. He's going in the men's 5K. A little bit of a disappointment for him in the 10K. He finished 13th, needed to finish 12th. But for him to turn it around in two days and get the qualifier there in the 5K, how special was that? Well, I the the opportunities were slipping away from us one by one and then we finally got to our last opportunity and I was giving him better than 50 50 shot at making it a 10k by the time we got to the 5k in my mind we're looking at 10 percent shot because he just ran a 10k uh, 48 hours earlier his focus was there and now he had to come back and regroup and get his mind focused on trying to pull it off, uh, it's, but it's definitely hard to come back and make it in a 5K if you didn't make it in a 10K. If you made it in a 10K, it's actually a little bit easier, but he did a great job. He stuck with the race plan very well, and uh, he was patient, and he finished strong, strong enough to get an automatic time. The time he ran actually was the fifth best time in the entire country of regionals because people aren't trying to run that fast to go to regionals, but he... Uh, he ran fast enough to get the job done, and, and as a sophomore now, he's going to have that national experience. So certainly he's one we're looking to to be an impact guy and score at nationals in the future. Yeah, it's coming up June 9th for him, uh, so just a few days away. What do you do at this point to get him ready for that race? It doesn't seem like that there's a whole lot of physical preparation that goes into it at this point, is there? Yeah, well, they, he stays with his training program. He, he's been trained to try to peak at – 
regionals and nationals and, uh, and to try to race well there. So he's definitely going out there with a goal of finishing as high as possible. There's all kinds of intermediate goals. You like ultimately to finish in the top eight and score, but the next eight make second team All-American, which is a nice thing to have in your, in your resume as a sophomore. You know, the, anybody who makes All-American, we put them up on the wall, and, and there's a lot of motivation for those things. So, but overall, we're looking for a positive experience out there, and if he, were to, if he finishes up as an All-American, we'll be really happy about that. Lastly here, uh, look back to Jovan Atkinson. You mentioned uh, the performance at uh, East Preliminary School record in the men's 110 hurdles. Uh, just uh, what, what are his odds going forward? What does that do for him uh, as far as uh, the future and, you know, qualifying? Well, right now we're looking at the – he's from Jamaica, so the Jamaican National Championships are in a couple weeks, and uh, we're going to try to figure out if we can't get him sent down there to run in Jamaica. Uh, according to the rules, I, I believe we're allowed to do that, so – that would be another – the more big meat experience you have, the better. It's, it's really challenging when you haven't been in the, in the real high level the first time you get there uh, to stay calm and to execute. And so the more experience you get like that, the better. Um, he – that 1393, he, he made, made, made him happy – ran, he made him happy and it made us all happy. Uh, it's not only was a school record, but I guess it's a – number two or three time ever in the Big South. And, and uh, because he was hurt and redshirted last year, he's a freshman right now. So to have an athlete at that level with three years ahead of him is a, is a blessing, something we're excited about, and I'm sure he's excited about it as well. He's an aviation major, so it's very easy for him to go to school for five years with all the flying he has to do and everything. And, you know, he loves to fly in a plane, but we like seeing him fly on a track. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time. Wish you safe travels to Eugene, and uh, looking forward to watching Azariah out there. Thank you very much. We do also, I should mention, we also have uh, Marcus Ballingy going to the Junior National Championship, and he's one of the uh, top seeds. So, you know, as sports end at Liberty, uh, at, at least we have something through June uh, 20, 24th now, I think. And Marcus has a shot at making the USA team to – to junior Pan Ams or something. So if that happens, we'll go way into July. Uh, that's why you like to see those kind of things happening. No doubt. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time. Wish you the best of luck. That's Brant Tolls, but the head coach of the Liberty men's and women's outdoor track and field teams. My name is Nick Pierce for the Liberty Flame Sports Network.